Hi there, friend. This is Lee Posky. Have you ever met the churchgoer who thinks they keep the law? Or have you yourself ever struggled with your own deficiency in obeying all of Christ's commands? Well, we're going to take a look at Scripture and put some context on Jesus' words, especially certain commands of His in the Sermon on the Mount. And we're going to look at the purpose of those words in light of people who think they keep the law. So follow along with me if you will. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, I pray, Lord, that you please reflect your light through me. Please give the hearer understanding of the context of your word. Please give the hearer understanding of the operation of your marvelous new covenant grace in contrast with the true demands of the law. I pray that all of this be done in order for people to better appreciate what you've given to your sheep, especially in light of the demands of your perfect justice. And I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Now then, John 1.17 says this, For the law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. Now that's a very significant statement, isn't it? What do you think that means in application? Well, if you survey the average relig religious person, you'll find most of them think they keep the Ten Commandments, at least most of it, as well as obey the commands of Christ. They're sometimes called red-letter Christians. But do they really live up to those commands in Scripture? Well, we're about to find out. In Jesus' day, just like it is now, there were people who thought they kept the law of Moses. For example, if you go to most Sunday school rooms in a given assembly in America today, you'll likely find a poster of the Ten Commandments hanging on a wall. Now, there's nothing wrong with the Ten Commandments. It's the application of, what, of what's flawed by most of religion. People are given the impression that we're supposed to at least try to fulfill those demands to please God. And if we're not fully successful, God will see our heart and cut us some slack for trying our best. And that's always been man's error in regard to the law. So in Jesus' Sermon on the Mount, he teaches the true, impossible demands of the law, squashing man's aspirations of living up to its true standard, thus driving him to cling to Christ as his substitute in fulfilling all righteousness. Listen to what Jesus is teaching in Matthew chapter 5 in the Sermon on the Mount. For I say unto you, that except your righteousness shall exceed the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees, ye shall in no case enter into the kingdom of heaven. Now, friend, understand, the scribes and Pharisees were the best law keepers that man has ever trotted out. They never really kept the law. They just thought they did. And Jesus is teaching here, if you're going to try to get to heaven by your conduct, by your law keeping, your conduct and law keeping had better be better than theirs, or you're going to hell. He's communicating. He's not messing around. You'd better step up your game if your morality is what's going to get you into heaven. Now, he's going to tighten the screws even more on those people who think to keep the law. Verse 21. Ye have heard that it was said by them of old time, Thou shalt not kill. And whosoever shall kill shall be in danger of the judgment. But I say unto you, that whosoever is angry with his brother without a cause shall be in danger of the judgment. And whosoever shall say to his brother, Raka, shall be in danger of the council. But whosoever shall say, Thou fool, shall be in danger of hell fire. Do you see what he did? He's showing not only the letter of the law, which some people could superficially project to comply to, but he's showing the invisible demands of the law. He's demonstrating how one's heart is what's in judgment. And, and it doesn't even come close to the actual law's demands. And also, what did Paul say in the New Covenant after the cross in Galatians 3.1? O foolish Galatians, who hath bewitched you? Now moving on with the Sermon on the Mount. Therefore, if thou bring thy gift to the altar, and there rememberest that thy brother hath ought against thee, leave there thy gift before the altar, and go thy way. First be reconciled to thy brother, and then come and offer thy gift. All right. Here he's referencing bringing gifts to an old covenant altar, which no longer exists. So nobody's complying to that. Moving on later in the sermon. But I say unto you, that whosoever looketh on a woman to lust at, after her, hath committed adultery with her already in his heart. And if thy right eye offend thee, pluck it out and cast it from thee. For it is profitable for thee that one of thy members should perish, 
and not that thy whole body should be cast into hell. And if thy right hand offend thee, cut it off, and cast it from thee. For it is profitable for thee that one of thy members should perish, and not that thy whole body should be cast into hell. Do you see it? It's more demands of what's really required of you if your approach to God is going to be by your obedience to the law. Do you still think that you keep Jesus' commands? Matthew 5.42 Give to him that asketh thee, and from him that would borrow of thee, turn not thou away. Now no one complies to that fully, just like the previous examples of what his commands really require of you. Have you plucked out your eye? Have you sawn off a limb to stop sinning? Have you emptied your bank account to everyone who asked you to give, them, to give them money? No. And if all those examples of true law-keeping hadn't already caused someone to give up on law-keeping, then Matthew 5.48 ought to do it. It says this, Be ye therefore perfect, even as your Father which is in heaven is perfect. Are you perfect? Spiritually perfect, that is. Well, if you're born again, you are, and you're spiritually perfect, without you lifting a finger. Hebrews 10, 14. For by one offering he hath perfected forever them that are sanctified. You see, dear Christian, Jesus is your substitute. Jesus is your righteousness. Jesus is your perfection. You get it? We honor and respect the law by knowing that we can't live up to it. And we receive Christ's substitution by grace through faith. So learn to rest in the finished work of Christ and leave the law-keeping to doomed Pharisees. Respect the law. Righteousness is a free gift, not of works, lest any man should boast. All right. Well, I thank you for sharing some of your valuable time with me. In all glory to the risen Lord Jesus Christ and no glory to us whatsoever. Bye-bye.